You're listening to 88.7 FM WNYK Warrior Radio, and this is KVB Moments. All right, guys, at 6 o'clock I went on air, and for 30 minutes I talked about our next guest, because I'm very excited. We had him here February 21st, and he's back, and it's ANT. Hey, what's up? I'm back. <laughs> guys, listen. We're doing a behind, I don't want to say behind the music because I'm pretty sure that's a television show and I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to copy. You know no, that's cool. But we'll do music moments. All right. So we're doing music moments right now. We're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about your music, your lyrics, your experience, your dreams. All right. What is that? So the first thing, okay, we're going to start with the beats. What inspires your beats? Because you, you make a lot of your own beats. Um, I don't make a lot of my own beats. I work on a lot That's of my own beats with Sorry. other producers. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you determine uh, what vibe and, and sample that you're going for, depending on the song? It really depends. Um, it, it depends totally on the mood of the, the beat kind of inspires the words. In okay, sense, so the beat comes first. Yeah, the beat is like the, the black and white picture and the words are the color in the picture. Because even without the words, the beat is still cool, you know? Okay. The, the picture is still a picture without the without the color. You're deep, man. You know? <laughs> All right, we're, we're we're in. All right. So, what approach do you have um, when making an album? So, like, is it? Do you try to knock a lot of songs out at once? You focus just on one song for one day. What, what's the vibe? Give me the vibe of the studio when you're working on an album, and and kind of what do you have to eliminate? What do you need to focus on? It's kind of all over the place. Um, I'll listen to a lot of beats, mm -hmm. maybe 15 beats or so, or make, you know, while we're working on beats. Right. And only use three of them, you know? So it's kind of a lot of weeding out what you're not going to do. You kind of just, like, kind of dabble around in different like, is there, with different ideas. Is there a pattern with what beats you you uh, you typically choose to use and, and why you're so selective with that? There's no particular pattern. It just kind of goes with how I'm feeling. You know, I have different kind of beats, like R&B beats, really hip-hop beats, uh, more electronic beats. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like what kind of vibe I'm going for. Do you have coastal beats? Like, do you coastal? have beats that you relate to that is more when you're in East Coast or West Coast? Because I remember mm. we were talking, I forgot what song it was, but it was a very, like, West Coast. It's, it sounded West Coast inspired. But you said you made it in, in yeah, the East yeah, Coast, yeah. so I was like, that's so inter interesting, because I know that you go back and forth. Yeah. Um, there's nothing in particular as far as, like, coastal, but I do have different inspirations, you know. If and what's I'm, that? If Talk I was on the West Coast. Um, beaches. Yeah. Uh, nice weather. Um, do you prefer different that? People, you know? Do you prefer the, the West Coast more? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I feel like everyone says that. No one can pick one thing. I don't How know. How about you list what what's the good things that in the West Coast that inspires your music, and, and what are the the great things in the East Coast that, that inspire you here? I, don't, I think the nature in the West Coast particularly inspires my music. Um, the East Coast, you know, the people and the city, basically, you know, so two you, different kind of inspirations. Got it. So you just said people. So do you, you didn't have any features on your last album, but when you do have features and you partner up with artists, what yeah. are you typically looking for? Like, do you look for singers? Do you look for someone who, you know, knows a lot about the production of music? Like, do you have a specific thing in mind that, that is like, I will only work with this type of person because they get it? No, I'm, cl I'm definitely open-minded when it comes to who I'm going to be working with. Um, I've worked with rappers, singers, producers, uh, guitar players, bass players, drummers, all different kinds of people. You and know, you so did work with a band, right? Yeah, I worked with a band. Um, I've worked with many different kind of people as far as music goes, but I don't look for a particular kind of person. But if right. I have a song, mm -hmm. like I have a new song that I'm working on, and it's, I know I need a singer for the song. Right. So I have a particular singer mm -hmm. that I want for this song. Got it. And I can shout her out. Her name is Anita Rain. She's going to be on the next oh, song coming up. Plug. Um, plug. <laughs> but... As far as me trying to pick, like who I'm gonna work with, I only work with this kind of rapper, this kind of right. rapper. No, I don't do that. I don't discriminate. So I wonder, like, what is? I I I've seen artists that are very like, this is what I need to make this project work. This 
this is the hook that needs to go for that. And you know what I mean? Just just picking all these things yeah. and they know that it has to go in this project. What what kind of specifies each project? Like what makes it different? What how do you uh, how do you create that? Wow, that's a really good question. Um I try to make each project like its own like movie kinda, you know? I try to tell a specific story in each project and keep around the same theme. That's good, because a lot of artists forget to do that. Yeah, don't, yeah, I don't stay on the same thing right. the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell, like, different parts of the story, you know? It's like a movie. Right. In a sense. I like that, because I... I it, it wasn't long ago, maybe a few years ago, I, I realized that there were some albums that were just, like, you can kind of listen to it, you know, out of order. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there were certain albums that I would listen to where it would be like you had to listen to it in order to get the entire story. Definitely. So that's interesting that you say that because I feel like sometimes it's kind of a blurred, blurred yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Like, people don't with, really like with my last album, I particularly chose that set list yeah. to tell the story. You know, I had to put Take a Chance last because that right. was like the yeah. kind of stamp on it. You know, right. and Ain't He This, Ain't He That is the intro. Right. It's not an intro song. It is an intro song, but it's not just like a, I don't call it intro. I never call my songs intro. Right. <laughs> I mean, unless it's just like uh, you know, talking scene or something like that. But this is a song introducing me and where I am at this point in time. How yeah. much of a difference do you see within your albums? Because like you just said, um, and if it's safe to say, like your albums represent where you were at that time. Yeah. Do you see yourself evolve within the albums? Do you ever think you go you go back as far as mm -hmm. as anything, or do you always think you you move forward? And if so, how? I'm always moving forward. Um, as far as sound, like right. quality, I want to mm -hmm. make the sound quality better and better because I'm also an engineer. Right. So I want to make sure my sound my s sound is better in each album, more clear, more quality. Right. Um, more like radio quality, you mm -hmm. know, instead of trying to just keep sounding the same. I want to always evolve my production of the song. But as well as the lyrics, I like to try different styles and different stuff, but always, I always stay around the same, um, you know, true to myself thing. Right. You know, I don't go too far from it. I'm not going to do trap song, right. but I can rap on a trap beat Thank you. and do it on my own style. That would right. be unique to me and you know it's me. And as far as the storylines in, in your songs, um, do you, like, do you ever, are you ever writing a song and, and you're like, there's nothing really going on with my life right now, like everything is so good and you yeah. don't have that, you know, sometimes you need that, or not need, but sometimes you want that, you know, that song that's going to connect, so you want that struggle song, you want that song Definitely. that talks about that yeah. past relationship, Definitely. Definitely. that struggle, but maybe you're not there right now, so is it hard to to go back to that place? No, you Do don't you get back never to that go place? back to the place. Right. Always move forward. Um, if I don't have anything to talk about at that particular time, mm -hmm. and it's never always good, you know? Right. Like you said, something's going always good. It's, not, yeah. it's never going always good. But either you could find a little thing that you could make into a big thing, or you could um, like watch a movie or something and write a, so like, write a song based on that movie. Right. You know, you can do like kind of like anything as far as inspiration goes. Yeah. And, and what kind of sparks that? So, it, so for you, I think you just said, is it movies that kind yeah, of sparks that? Cool. Oh, I, I can write about that. Yeah, Duh. I like movies. Um, awesome. I'm not like a big movie head. I don't know like actors and right. quotes from movies, mm -hmm. but I'm saying like watching movies is cool to me personally. Because uh, it kind of takes you out of like reality, but it kind of like makes you relate to the movie as well. I think so too. And so, so what kind of artists do you do you like to partner up with? I think I kind of just asked To that. partner up with? Just people who are on the same mind, like level as me as far as um, really... Same level? Yeah, really there trying... There we go. <laughs> really trying to work hard and they're serious about it and they want to, you know, put out a good a story, you know, tell a good story in the song. Where does that focus come from? Because I, I, in a lot of your songs, it's uh, actually... There's a quote that I wrote down... Um, In No Distractions, you say, I was always told to focus on the plan, but things change and plans get out of hand. Yeah. How, tell me, tell me about that line. Tell me when specifically that came into play. When, when did you think that you were, you know, you had, did you have a plan? Did you have a specific plan and, and 
you were like, you know what, that's that's not where I'm going right now. Well, in other words, um, when I meant when I said that line, I meant um, like we're taught in school to always, you know, uh, take it step by step towards the towards the goal yeah. of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But things change, and they don't tell you how to. Things change, and plans get out of hand. Right. As in, they don't tell you how to deal with the adversity in or, in order to get to the right. end result. Right. You know, sometimes you're just taught about. Here's what you do, and you'll get here. But yeah. they don't tell you about, oh, what if this happens when you're trying exactly. to get there? So yeah. that's what I meant by that particular line. Yeah, I always say, like, like what if we learned, like, life things in school? You know yeah. what I mean? It's There's a lot of things calculus, you don't learn. Yeah. You learn, like, you know, how, how to write a check. And, you yeah. know, things that how are to actually going to, yeah, get <laughs> you to that next next step, essentially. Um, in in this one, actually, take a chance. You, you say you got to... You got a vision, nobody can see what you see, but they listen. So, in that, I, I want to say, you're so focused. Have you ever tried to tell someone, like, this is this is what I have planned. This is what's going to happen yeah. for me. This is the journey that I'm on right now. They don't see it. And they, they're like, okay. You know what I mean? They don't because see the big especially yeah. with music, a lot of people think like that um, with music because. They may think that everyone's trying to do it, but what gets you what gets you to to stay focused in that? So what gets me to um, stay focused on my music? On words? that and also does it does it ever bother you that people don't see the vision that you oh, know is gonna uh, happen? Uh, okay. Um, and how do you handle that? It kinda does but it does bother me a little bit if people that I truly um, are like in like love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't see what I'm trying to show them. Mm -hmm. But I'll always prove them wrong. Right, you know? right. I'll always... Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, yeah, it does. That's it does, because like you see the bigger picture and they don't might not get it at first. Yeah. But then they'll be like, oh, you know what he was talking about. Or, okay, it works. And is it... And I think I know exactly how you feel because I, I think I'm in a sense. Mm -hmm. But it, is it something that's like, I just know this is going to happen? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, nothing... You kind of can feel. You can have that positive, that right? that um, you know, attitude, like positive attitude of right. you know it's gonna happen, but you don't know it's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're lying to yourself a right. little bit, but you know that you're gonna work as hard as possible to make right. it happen. You know yeah, what I'm I don't know, man. You're I gonna, may disagree. You're gonna, I... you're gonna try do everything you possibly can to make it happen. Like for example, um, some of the shows that I put on, mm. um, I'll, I'll shout out my brother on this, yeah. John. Uh, what a funk. He said, um, you know, nobody's going to come to the show. I'm like, no, they're going to come. I'm like, there's going to be over 100 people to show. He's like, no, they're not. So he doubted me just enough for me to bring over 100 people and pack the show out. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? I didn't know for a fact that there was going to be 100 people there. Right. But I did my damn best to get yeah. 100 people there. Yeah. And what? Pack the and show out. Was? He's like, oh, yeah, that, wow, that was great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, John. Come on, John. Come on, John. I'm doing like that. But see, that's actually true. I, I feel like, and I, I'm similar to you in that aspect. I feel like I work harder when people talk crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm just like, well, but it kinda well now I'm going to do it. It kind of hurts when people you love like, are talking crap. Like, it's just, when people and haters just talk crap, you're like, all right, whatever. Yeah. But when people you care about, like, you're like, damn, I really want to prove them yeah, wrong. Yeah, right? You know? I know exactly what you mean, man. Uh, so, so, with that, what is your motivation? What, what gets you past those situations where people are like, you know kind of I guess wanted to say I told you so or just seeing the end result and going about what you got is focused straight to the point as without people you know getting in your way or interfering with your mindset is it easy for you to see that these things are gonna happen for you it, like is it easy for you to, to look past the struggles or yeah. is it it's it's easy in a sense it's easy to to have a vision and know that you've done even harder things in the past right and you could probably do this thing this small task in right now or even if it's a hard task you know that you've been through worse and you'll beat the worst in the past and you know it's a good way of looking at it you should do motivational speaking <laughs> i feel like you know we can all benefit from that mindset because i feel like especially at the age that we're at i mean you're older than me but you know around this age a lot of people lose the motivation because mm -hmm. there's a lot of doubt yeah. and a lot of that doubt actually is not coming from from them it's it, like you said it's coming from people that care about yeah. them you know are trying to look out for them but they don't see what they see the vision yeah exactly. they don't see it so it's it's hard but um but so i want to know are you 
are you a competitive rapper? Like, are are you, or is there a such thing as as not being a competitive rapper because you're constantly going against the game, like the hip hop? game yeah. you know what I mean so so there's so much that you're going up against do you feel that competitiveness when you write a song or when you perform or when you you know do anything well you, you're always gonna have competition no matter what you do you know as a radio host you're gonna have other radio hosts um, on your level competing right. with you as well you know because we're all after a specific audience right you know? um, so there's always gonna be competition yeah you always have to keep that in mind. Do you think it's more but tangible not, now that we could see it with social media and stuff like that? Probably, probably. But you always have to keep it in mind, but don't focus on the competitors, you know? Focus, don't go on to their pages, right. listening to their songs and be like, oh, let me compare and contrast my song right. with their song. Oh, their song has more, you know, cool drops or whatever. My right. song doesn't have this. Yeah. No, don't do that. Yeah, and that's what people don't understand about Know having... that the competitor is there. Yeah. Acknowledge it, but don't go over there and try to compare and contrast because then you're going to try to make yourself into them yeah. and not stay true to yourself. And people don't get that with having like someone that you look up to, an artist that you look up to, or, or someone that's very successful that you're like, their songs are, are getting this many plays. There. No, you, know what you I mean? can't compare like, that. You can't. You can't. You can't compare. What's good for you isn't what's good for me. Exactly. You know and I mean? you have different things that, you know, you, you both bring different things to the table, so you yeah. can't. You know, you can't compare their skills with your skills. Or you don't know. They might have a whole marketing team or pay for, more, like, a certain, like, thing. You, you know? know what? That's Product a good point team. because... Because you only see what's in the front of the scenes, exactly. not behind the scenes. No one thinks about, hmm, like, like what goes into... And I, I just made a comment earlier. I, I think I was on air. And um, I said, no, like, no one thinks about what goes into a concert, right? You go and it's and it's perfect, you see right? It's, on the it's stage. great. It's so much yeah. fun. Like you don't you don't think about the hours that the technical difficulties yeah. I've the, set up many concerts um yeah. Dodger Stadium, a yeah. bunch of different places in California. You yeah. Know? Yeah, and tell me about that. We, we spent maybe three or four days setting up a Maroon Five concert in Dodger right. Stadium. I think they got on stage, did their hour long show. Say, yeah. like, oh, this is great. Yeah. We're five. And then we spent two more days breaking it down, exactly. doing overnights. Exactly. They don't they don't see that. No, they don't and they don't see what leads up to it. They don't see the the preparation that it takes, everything. Um, you know, that the artists get not only the artists, but people that are in your position as well, um, that are setting up or, or you know what I mean? Yeah. People don't you don't see that. They only... See what's in front of the scenes. Yeah. You don't really get to see what's behind the scenes unless you want to. You yeah, exactly. You can go online and check it out. Exactly. Man, I like you. <laughs> You're great. You're a <laughs> Thank great you. guy, Thank you. Appreciate man. it. So who would you like to produce for? If you... If a anyone. Not just, you know... If you can produce for anyone, who would it be and why? We could do a live or dead if you... You know what I mean? If you mm, want. That's a hard question. And why them? You know what I mean? Uh, probably like Eminem, I'd say, because um, Eminem is one of the guys, one of the few rappers that I know that's really hands-on with his own um, production and music as well. You know, so he'll go in, he'll be hanging out with the engineer, saying, "Oh, we should, we should add this delay to this, you know, or this reverb, or mm -hmm. you know, EQ it this way." He'll actually get in depth and dirty, down and dirty with his song. Mm -hmm. You know, Tupac. He's one of my favorite rappers, but he just rap the song, go to the next studio, rap a song, go to the next studio, rap a song, you know. But Eminem is, you maybe I might get to know him if we were working on a song together. If I yes. was working on a song for him. So do you, you, what I get from that is that you like the studio vibe. You like yeah working on a project, not just getting the job done. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I I like that too because I don't. I think in some cases, not all cases, you could tell when it was just. A recording that you did. someone sent you right someone sent you a recording sent you a beat and you just you know do your thing and then send it back yeah you could tell those types of encounters you know what I mean you yeah. could tell what that song is and and, the, and then in the on the same note you could tell when someone took the time to be in the studio with the artist that they're featuring yeah. right and really was like sit down and what's think gonna about work it. yeah or, and I mean, you don't always have to sit down and think about it you can just keep going keep working on the song and then it, it's like art happening at the same time as art is happening right you know like you might think of like production ideas as far as let's be let's drop the beat out at this point 
or let's um, add a little echo at this point right. as you're working on it. So it's a really cool process in the studio. And I think you're you're in a unique position being able to to produce and, and kind of be the creative genius. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of yours. <laughs> you know, I just I just want to yeah, I'm no, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> you're not far from it though, but but being that, you know, um, that those hands to craft everything. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It's cool cuz you you have the ultimate say over it, you know. Right. So what do you think um what do you think isn't being talked about in music or needs to be focused on more? Um focused on more. And so our last question before we go to song break, yeah, sure. and then we're back with part two. What needs to be focused on more in hip hop music or music in general? Let's do hip hop. Hip hop? Um, nothing really, because every person has their own um, way of expressing their feelings. Mm -hmm. So the way I express like me being happy on a song might be different than the way like a trap rapper would express being happy on a song. Well, maybe not how the, let me rephrase it. Maybe what we are exposed to. Maybe not what an oh. artist individually does. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like what we're most, most likely to, to hear. Po I think positive things should be talked about, you know, more. Not so, so not so much negative stuff. You know, Very I don't like hearing about the drugs and yeah. drinking and smoking on the radio. I, I just don't like it. Right, you can't you can't drive down the street with your mom, right, and, and yeah. your sister and your whole family, and they're talking about drugs. It's cool, though. like, like it's okay if you reference it. <laughs> it's okay if you reference it, like you know, uh, uh, telling a story. You you know, you drank or whatever, went out at a party, and then you tell us like the story about it. Right. But then the whole song is talking about drugs, this, drugs, that, yeah. smoking this, smoking that, drinking this, drinking. It's not that. fun, and it's not relatable. It, and it's, no, not to me. I no. mean, to some people, that is probably relatable. So that's why people are buying it and people listening to it. Because they not like that. Me. You know what you I know? do on a Saturday night? Watch Golden Girls. All right. <laughs> so I'm not doing that. That's not, I don't want to hear that on the radio. You know what I want to hear on the on the radio? A N T, and that's what we're gonna wow. play right now. Thank you. So before we go to part two, we're gonna play some songs by A N T, and then we'll be back. All right. You listen to 88.7 FM. 